I was setting the table with an assortment of teas and a plate of my famous lemon bars when I heard a peculiar rustling from Chris's room. The layout of our bungalow meant his room was just down the hall, and usually I could hear him playing music or chatting with friends online. This sound was different, like fabric being shuffled around. Curiosity peaked, I decided to check on him. Chris, everything okay in there? I called out, heading toward his room. There was a brief, tense silence, followed by a hurried, yeah, mom, everything's fine. His voice sounded strained, and a mother knows when something's off. I opened the door without knocking, a habit he often scolded me for, but I wasn't prepared for the sight that met my eyes. Chris stood in front of his mirror, clad in my teal silk dress. The dress clung awkwardly to his frame, too long and too tight in places, but there was no mistaking the look of calm on his face, like he was finally at ease. My mouth went dry and I felt a surge of conflicting emotions. Shock, confusion, and a growing anger welled up inside me. Chris, I gasped, my voice louder than intended. His eyes widened in horror as he turned to face me. Mom, I can explain, he stammered, his face flushing with embarrassment. Take it off, take it off right now, I barked, my voice trembling. What are you thinking? This is, I don't even know what this is. Chris fumbled with the dress, his hands shaking. I'm sorry, Mom, he muttered, struggling to unzip the back. I didn't mean for you to see this. My heart pounded in my chest. Why, Chris? Why would you do this? I demanded, but before he could answer, the doorbell rang. My book club members had arrived early and panic gripped me. Hurry up and change, I hissed, glancing toward the front door. We'll talk about this later. But it was too late. As I turned to head back to the living room, the door swung open and in walked Linda, with her usual bright smile and an armful of books. Hello, Helen, she called out, her eyes scanning the room. I hope we're not too early. Before I could intercept, the rest of the ladies filed in, their voices filling the bungalow with laughter and greetings. I saw their eyes flick toward Chris, who was frozen in place, still wearing my dress. There was a beat of silence. Then Linda, ever the joker, said, Oh, Helen, is this our new book club member? Quite the fashionista. I felt heat rise to my cheeks. No, no, I said quickly, my voice strained. This is my son, Chris. He was just trying on a costume for school. He's going to change now. Chris, still red-faced, nodded hastily and dashed back to his room. The ladies exchanged curious glances, clearly intrigued. I felt my composure slipping but forced a smile. Shall we get started? I said, trying to divert their attention. But the curiosity lingered. As we settled into our discussion, I could feel their eyes flick back to the hallway where Chris had disappeared. Finally, it was Linda who broke the ice again. So, Helen, she began, a note of gentle curiosity in her voice. That dress did look lovely on Chris. Maybe he should join us for our discussion? I opened my mouth to protest, but before I could, the other members chimed in with nods and murmurs of agreement. Yes, let him join us. He looked so pretty, Helen. It's just a bit of fun, after all. I was torn. Part of me wanted to protect Chris from any potential ridicule, but another part of me recognized the genuine warmth in my friends' voices. They weren't mocking him. They were sincerely curious and, dare I say, impressed. Taking a deep breath, I called out, Chris, honey, would you like to come out here for a moment? There was a long pause, then the sound of a door opening slowly. Chris emerged, still dressed in my teal dress, his eyes filled with a mix of apprehension and hope. The room fell silent as he walked in, and I could see his hands trembling slightly. Linda, bless her heart, was the first to speak. Chris, you look absolutely stunning, she said warmly. Would you like to join our discussion? We'd love to have you. Chris glanced at me, searching for permission. I nodded, my heart aching with both pride and fear. Yes, Chris, come join us, I said softly. 
He hesitated for a moment, then took a deep breath and sat down among us. The ladies welcomed him with open arms, their curiosity now mingled with genuine interest. My heart pounded as I watched him sit there, still wearing my dress and blonde wig. The sight made my blood boil, and I could feel the anger bubbling up again. This was my dress, my space, my sanctuary. And now it was being intruded upon by something I couldn't understand. Chris seemed to sense my tension and kept his eyes downcast. But the ladies, bless their hearts, were unfazed. They immediately started complimenting him, ooing and aahing over his appearance. Chris, that dress looks stunning on you, said Margaret, one of the more fashionable members of our group. You have such a good sense of style. And the wig really brings out your features, added Linda. You could definitely pass for a natural blonde. I felt a mix of anger and something else, something I couldn't quite identify. As much as I hated to admit it, there was a small flicker of pride at seeing Chris being accepted and complimented. Still, my emotions were too tangled for me to process fully. What are you all saying? I snapped, unable to hold back any longer. This is, this is absurd. The ladies turned to me, their expressions softening. Helen, darling, said Susan, the unofficial leader of our group. I know this is a shock, but look at Chris. Look how happy he seems. I glanced at Chris, and indeed, despite his initial nervousness, he seemed more at ease now. There was a tentative smile on his face, a hint of relief in his eyes, but I was still struggling to accept it. This isn't right, I said, my voice trembling. He's my son. He shouldn't be wearing my clothes, let alone adding a wig. Why not? Margaret asked gently. Clothes are just fabric, Helen. If they make him feel good, where's the harm? I opened my mouth to retort, but Linda cut in. I understand your concerns, Helen, but think of it this way. Chris is exploring who he is. It might be a phase, it might not be. Either way, wouldn't you want to support him? I sighed, feeling my resolve weaken. They had a point, and deep down, I knew it. My anger was rooted in my confusion and fear of the unknown. I took a deep breath and nodded slowly. I suppose you're right. It's just a lot to take in. The ladies smiled, sensing my shift in perspective. We're here for you, Helen, Susan said, and for Chris. Let's help him feel comfortable. They turned their attention back to Chris, who was watching our exchange with wide eyes. Chris? Margaret said kindly, let's talk about your outfit. How do you feel in that dress? Chris glanced at me, then back at the ladies. I feel pretty, he admitted quietly. It feels nice to be accepted. That's wonderful to hear, Linda said. But maybe we can make a few tweaks to enhance your look even more. What do you think, Helen? Caught off guard, I blinked at her. Uh, sure. I said, trying to sound supportive. What do you suggest? The ladies discussed various options, suggesting different styles and colors that might suit Chris better. I watched as they gave him advice, their enthusiasm contagious. I found myself nodding along, slowly warming to the idea that maybe this wasn't so bad after all. We need a name for you, Susan said suddenly, snapping her fingers. A lovely name to match your lovely look. Chris looked uncertain, glancing at me for approval. I managed a small smile. What do you think, Chris? Would you like a different name when you're dressed like this? He hesitated, then nodded. Yes, I think I would. How about Christina? Margaret suggested. It's close to your real name, so it won't be too confusing. Chris's face lit up. I like that. Christina. The ladies cheered, and I couldn't help but smile at their enthusiasm. Despite my initial anger, I felt a strange sense of happiness seeing Chris, Christina, being accepted so wholeheartedly. Christina it is, I said, squeezing his hand. The book club members continued their discussion with renewed enthusiasm, now including Christina in their conversations as if she had always been a part of the group. 
I watched in amazement as she held her own, participating in the lively debates and laughing at their jokes. The room buzzed with an energy I hadn't felt in a long time, a mixture of acceptance, curiosity, and warmth. As the afternoon wore on, the ladies gradually began to gather their things and prepare to leave. Each one made a point to approach Christina, offering words of encouragement and compliments. Christina, it was lovely meeting you, said Linda, giving her a hug. I hope we get to see you again next time. Yes, Christina. Margaret added, patting her shoulder. You brought a fresh perspective to our discussion. Don't be a stranger. Susan, the last to leave, smiled warmly at Christina. Remember, we're here for you. Anytime you need advice or just want to talk, you know where to find us. Christina beamed, clearly overwhelmed by their kindness. Thank you so much, everyone. It means a lot to me. After the last of our guests had gone, the house fell into a peaceful silence. I turned to Christina, who was still wearing my teal dress and looking more relaxed than I had seen her in a long time. I felt a rush of conflicting emotions, pride, confusion, acceptance, and a lingering trace of my earlier anger. Well, I said, breaking the silence, it looks like that's your dress now. Christina's eyes widened in surprise. What do you mean, Mom? I sighed, trying to find the right words. It suits you well, so you can have it. Besides, it seems to make you happy. And after seeing how much it means to you today, I think you should keep it. Her face lit up with gratitude. Really, Mom? Thank you so much. I managed a smile, feeling the last of my resistance melting away. You're welcome, Christina. Now tell me, how long have you been cross-dressing? Christina looked down, her fingers nervously playing with the hem of the dress. A while, she admitted. I guess I've always felt more comfortable in girls' clothes, but I was scared to tell you. I didn't know how you'd react. I sat down beside her, taking her hand in mine. I wish you had told me sooner, but I understand why you didn't. It's a big thing to share, and it must have been scary for you. I'm sorry if I ever made you feel like you couldn't come to me with this. She nodded, tears welling up in her eyes. Thank you for understanding, Mom. It means the world to me. I pulled her into a hug, feeling a sense of peace settle over me. Christina, I said softly. I want to help you. Let's take this journey together. How about we start with your makeup? Her eyes widened in surprise and delight. Really, Mom? You'd do that? I nodded, smiling. Of course. I want you to feel comfortable and confident in who you are. Now, let's head to my room. I have some makeup we can use. We walked to my bedroom, and I opened my vanity drawer, pulling out an array of cosmetics. Christina watched with eager anticipation as I selected a few basics to start with. Okay, I said, turning to her. Let's start with a light foundation. I guided her through each step, showing her how to apply foundation, blush, and a touch of mascara. She watched intently, her concentration evident in the furrow of her brows. You're doing great, I encouraged, handing her a tube of lipstick. Now, just a little color on your lips. Christina applied the lipstick carefully, then looked at herself in the mirror. Her face lit up with joy. Wow, Mom, I look, I look pretty. You look beautiful, I corrected, feeling a swell of pride. And this is just the beginning. Let's try on some more of my clothes, shall we? We spent the next hour rummaging through my closet. I pulled out dresses, skirts, blouses, and even a few pairs of shoes. Christina tried on each outfit, twirling in front of the mirror, her confidence growing with every change. Try this one, I said handing her a floral dress that I hadn't worn in years. It's a bit more casual, but I think it'll look great on you. She slipped into the dress, and I couldn't help but smile at how natural she seemed. It fits perfectly, she said, smoothing the fabric over her hips. It does, I agreed. And now, let's talk about some tips on how to be more feminine. It's not just about the clothes or makeup. It's also about how you carry yourself. 
Christina nodded eagerly, ready to absorb everything I had to offer. First, I began. Posture is important. Stand tall, shoulders back, and walk with confidence. It's amazing how much that can change how you feel. I demonstrated, walking across the room with a graceful stride. Christina imitated me, her movements a bit awkward at first, but improving with each step. That's it, I said, clapping my hands. You're getting it. Next, we talked about gestures and mannerisms. I showed her how to hold her hands, how to sit gracefully, and even how to handle small talk with a touch of charm. Christina soaked it all in, practicing diligently until she felt more comfortable. You're doing wonderfully, I said, giving her a reassuring smile. Remember, it's all about being yourself and feeling confident in your own skin. Thank you, Mom, she said, her voice filled with gratitude. I couldn't do this without you. Hope you enjoyed this story, and if you're looking for a daily escape into the world of cross-dressing, subscribe now and enjoy new stories every single day.